Intrastatic region trade is higher between and then trade between other countries in Africa. For a look now at cross-border trade, we're joined via Skype, um, Tuli Nkube, Chief Economist at the African Development Bank. Good to have you with us via Skype, uh, Professor. Let's uh, first look at intra-African trade and the key trends we've seen, because as I said there, uh, intra-African trade in SADC right now, sitting at 15%, that's considered high versus other regions. But how would you describe the state of intra-African trade right now? Well, the, the state of inter-Africa trade really is, is positive, it's looking up, it's been going up, but not fast enough. And there are many reasons as to why it's not moving up fast enough. Uh, but also when we consider trade, uh, trade activity, we should go beyond goods and services. We should look at movement of people. We should also look at movement of capital in terms of intra-Africa investment. But it's looking positive. It could be better. It's looking positive, which is a good sign. But one of the issues has been uh, the delays at borders. And of course, you've done a big study into this and the potential that we could have to improve border post. At this point in time, can we quantify the cost of these delays at customs? The delays at, at customs in, in across borders in Africa and in Southern Africa specifically are quite high. Those costs are quite high. Uh, for instance, if you look at Bidebridge, which is the border between Zimbabwe and South Africa, but also it's a transit route for all the other countries going up north to, to Zambia, to Malawi, Tanzania, parts of Tanzania, DRC, Congo, and so forth. Uh, the, the cost comes to about $35 million a year in delays. Truckers spending two to three days at the border taking so long to cross uh, in terms of lost business, time. Uh, it's all, all very expensive, and all that could be cut down quite substantially through a one-stop border post arrangement. Yeah, tell us about the one-stop border post arrangement, because there have been success stories with the implementation of it, uh, the border between Zimbabwe and Zambia, known as Chirundi. So tell us how that system has helped improve uh, the flow of goods and services across those two borders. The Chirundu one-stop border post between Zimbabwe and Zambia is a very good example of how such a, a, a facility could work. It is basically cut down uh, a crossing time from something like two to three days for truckers before down to uh, two hours. And for those who are able to pre-clear, the, the, they, they, they cross the border within 15 minutes. So imagine that, that now being transplanted to a place like, like Bidebridge, uh, where again, you know, two to three days is spent by, by truckers trying to get across and other people. Uh, we could cut down that easily to two hours and with pre-clearing that down to 15 minutes, and that's a major, major saving. Of course, this means that the two countries work together. It's one facility that would include all the immigration, security, policing arrangements, customs and all the various uh, you know, issues around customs, inspection of goods, all that being done within one facility with an appropriate revenue sharing arrangement between the governments of South Africa and Zimbabwe. So that, that's what would need to be put in place. In what, what is the cost of this kind of system? Is, is it a cost factor uh, that needs to be uh, taken into account when we're looking at uh, implementing, the, as you say, this one-stop border post? Oh, frankly, if you consider the, the cost of, of, of delays uh, with the current you know, arrangement coming up to easily 35 million a year in, in dollar terms, the cost of one-stop one -stop border post wouldn't be that much. I mean, the saving is enormous. If we spend that amount of money on putting the facility in place uh, maybe a bit more, uh, this is a major, major saving uh, over time, and it will be a most welcome uh, facility for facilitating trade. Uh, yeah. within the region. So, of course, the World Economic Forum is underway in Ethiopia right now, and many saying that one of the focuses is going to be on uh, stimulating intra-African trade. Uh, do you feel that governments uh, and uh, ministries involved in, in trade acknowledge the role that these border posts play in delaying trade? Oh, yes, the government in Africa are, are committed. They are acutely aware of the importance of facilitating trade through one such instrument as one stop border ports. Absolutely they're aware of that. I think a lot of it has to do with the implementation, the strategy element, the execution. I think that is where we want a, a more uh, you know a more aggressive, a more focused approach. And this we as a bank, a African Development Bank, want to assist in this regard to get the conversation going and also funding where we can afford it, of course, to help our governments implement these one-stop border ports. I mean, the governments have done a wonderful job in identifying the various 
corridor, small south corridor. We know that Bayra is also part of a corridor, Walvis Bay. You have got uh, uh, the port of Dar es Salaam. Then you've got border. Then you've got Bay Bridge. You've got uh, Durban. You've got uh, you know Busia between Uganda and Kenya. Yes, and you've got Malaba. You've got uh, uh, Mananga. Uh, uh, you know uh, uh, border posts. So all all of these could be implemented, and it will make these uh, uh, you know uh, corridors that we've identified for making uh, uh, African countries better connected, uh, connecting the landlocked to those that are not. Yeah. Uh, all these have been identified, and if we implemented these trade activity would certainly go up. And the ministers understand this. It's just about strategy and focus and implementation. Uh, in terms of uh, funding, uh, has the AFDB actually committed funds to, to some of the border posts and to uh, implementing this one-stop border post system? Oh, oh yes. Uh, we, we have uh, facilitated uh, you know, uh, the implementation of one-stop border posts across uh, Africa. Uh, in fact, wherever we get involved in a, in a regional road network in terms of funding, we always consider the issue of a one-stop border post we'll, uh, in Southern Africa, in East Africa, but also in, in, in West Africa. Uh, certainly this is a package that we bring on board because we see the role of both the hard infrastructure in terms of the road and then the role of the soft infrastructure being a one-stop one -stop border post being complementary bits that will make uh, uh, that will facilitate trade across Africa. Uh, tell us about Vision 2040 because uh, we're far away from that, but that really entails the the use of these one-stop border posts to facilitate intra-Africa trade. So tell us about some of these uh, key the key plan in 2040 and and what what this might look like if we do get to this vision. Oh well, you know, it, 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 2040. We're all excited about at least the forecast to. Of, of looking that far ahead. Uh, certainly we see uh, basically a one-stop border post along all major corridors uh, in East Africa, in, uh, uh, in, in, in North Africa, in, in Central Africa, in, in West Africa. Certainly for, for, for Southern Africa, on the North-South corridor, uh, there will be one-stop border posts in most areas where, where they are needed. So we see a much better integrated Africa by year 2040 to year 2060, and this is very exciting. Uh, but as I said earlier, while we are, we are facilitating the movement of goods and services, let's also think about the movement of people and also the movement of capital in yeah. terms of intra-Africa investment. The three pillars will make uh, for what we would call regional integration, Africa integration. Yep. On that note, Mtuli Ntube will leave it at that. Uh, of course, Mtuli is the chief economist at the African Development Bank.